So religion, a source of hope, a source of identity, a source of salvation for a lot of people. And sometimes for the poor people, it is all they need for grace, for succor, and for some sort, for some sort of relief. But here is a plot twist. There is a man in Kenya that calls himself Jesus of Tongaren that turned water into tea. Yes, you heard it right. He turned water into tea. So we're going to be delving into this conversation and speaking in, about religion broadly, asking some key questions today. As always, please subscribe if you're new or yet to do so. Like the content and give us your own take about religion in the comment section below. Let's go. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Skatayan Podcast, where we discuss society and how it affects people in it. I'm your guy, Dr. Tobes, and as usual, I've got my regular contributor, Mr. Sheon T. How are you feeling today, sir? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Glad to be here. I'm glad that the weekend is on the horizon. Uh, yeah, me too. I'm glad the weekend is on the horizon as well. And because of the nature of the topic, please welcome back Mr. Wang. Wang Wang, how are oh. you doing, sir? <laughs> I'm doing amazing. I'm feeling great, guys. I'm feeling great. Nice All to be right. back after a long time. Yeah, a long, long time. Well, hopefully we can bring you back in on more future episodes. But let's go straight into this one without which you must waste more time. Religion and the poor. It is no secret that faith has been a cornerstone in the lives of millions, especially those struggling with poverty. Religion offers a set sense of hope, a sense of purpose, as well as a sense of community and support. Because when material wealth is out of reach, spiritual wealth becomes the most precious currency. And as some people say, when life gives you nothing, sometimes all you want is a little divine intervention. Sometimes it might be in the form of a cup of tea. Right. So my first question to the panel is, why do you think religion sense, um, seems to resonate so deeply with those that tend to be on the lower side of equality? I will start with Sean T and then we, we get on to Wang. Well, I mean, like the religion attempts to answer one of the fundamental questions of life, right? Like, why are we here? Um, why you know, do we exist and what happens after? And I think no group of people is that question more relevant for than the poor, I guess, quote unquote, in our society. Um, so religion, essentially, as you as you describe, I think rightly so, offers um, you know a sense of hope, um, offers solace. I don't think it's a coincidence that you know the the least like there's an inverse relationship. It appears to be with, as in between the development economically or technologically of a society and how religious the society is. I don't think that's a coincidence. Um, so, you know, yeah, it, I think it just, it just reflects, like, as you described, the um, desire for hope, community, um, solace, and, you know, an escape from the, I guess, like, um, difficult material conditions that they face. Fair enough. And um, as Karl Marx once said, religion is the opium of the masses. Um, Wang, right. do you do you agree with this? Because I also think, apart from the sense of hope, I still think it's an identity. Because in England, for example, or in Brazil or in Mexico, if you ask people, "What? Who are you?" They'll be like, "I'm a Christian," but they don't go to church. They don't even practice religion. So, mm. um, is it just more about hope? Is it about identity? Um, wh what do you think, Wang? All right, for me. Um... I believe there's a there's a healthy mix of all of it, right? Um, at the end of the day, it's 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 something that we all met um, coming into the world. M many of us were born and knew knew it, and um, that sense of community, that sense of belonging, um, it's one of the one of the key things. However, on the side of you know where the where it's more it resonates more with the poor, like I think you said also as well, the word hope. Anything that gives the the man hope, gives them you know that belief that um, one day is going to get better. However, I, I mean from from myself who is practicing, I, I've seen that it's practically the wrong way to go about it, and that's why as Shimon said, development and the inverse need to be able to rely on religion. Um, there's an inverse relationship. The the and that's there's something my own pastor says. He says if your prayers are God forgive me and God give me. By the time you mm -hmm. get to a society where everything works, 
if that's your only prayer and your only need, you will never need to to want to pray again because mm. what you used to think were problems for prayer are already answered by a system. And so technically you don't need those prayers anymore. And so I think on the poor side of things, a lot of people, uh, I mean, and so a lot of people have, it's, it, I stand, let me not say I stand to be corrected, it's open for debate. Mm. However, I believe a lot of people are doing it wrong. Um, yeah. For me, I, personally, and this is just me, I, I'm, I mean, I, I can count how many times I say, God, give me this or that, you know. My, my own is just, yeah. and that's why you see some Christians say, um, Christianity is a way of life. No, because religion refers to the set of, you know, ritual and things you need to do to be able to say you are part of this sect, really. Yeah. However, if you believe it as a way of life, like, okay, I wake up just the way you are married and you need to talk to your wife before the day starts, um, if that's mm. the way you see it, and you, when you're talking to your wife or your husband, you don't only talk to them because you need something. Some days you're just a guy, man. Today I had a bad day. I just want to talk to you. And so mm-hmm. uh, that's why when you see some definition of prayer, like prayer is a communication with God and not to. And, but then we are talking about religion now. Let me not focus on Christianity because a lot of religions exist. You know, yeah. some is, is just to sit down and say, God, help me, you know. And some religions are just, you know, put God like somebody that you can't be friends with. It's just here and you are just here. All you need to do is just yeah. do everything he's asked you to do. And hopefully, you know, it gets better. You know, there are just so many and so many in explanation like that. But at the end of the day, um, I think whatever religion is, what the central truth of our religion is the is is the peddling of hope that one day, you know, wherever it is that you are, and the truth about it is, as much as how people hate being poor, um, you know, they don't want to be poor. And if something says that you are not going to do so much effort to be able to get there, something can just mm-hmm. happen. A lot of people will believe in it. And I think just to end that, you remember, um, Bishop Oedwe would say any faith that is hundred percent fully reliant on God is an irresponsible faith. And mm. personally, this is me again, I think that a lot of people are lazy. They just know that, okay, I'm not trying to get any skill. I'm not trying to do anything personally for myself to be able to see the results I want. So mm. I just rely on the hope that something external that I have no mm. control over will just help boost me one day. And because they've seen stories of some people that may have happened to. But if you're about to, I always ask people, hear the story behind. Because as much as I'm a Christian, guy, I work on the outcomes I want to see. Like, yeah. no, like it's, I mean, it's not only really, it's not only really a message of of hope now, right? And I think specifically, like with with regards to the question of why it resonates a lot with people on the lower, I guess, like economic spectrum, right? Yeah. It's not only in Nigeria; it's also in like the US, for example, in, mm-hmm. in the West. Also, you find that like the poorer, more rural white communities are also the most Christian. Um, the most like you know heavily religious um, in in Muslim or in Hindu society, you find that the people who are more um, um, righteous in their adherence are usually the poorer people. Generally, mm-hmm. in any society, regardless of the religion, the more sophisticated elites in the cities and whatever are usually less religious on balance than those you know who you find on the outskirts. And I think aside from the hopeful message. There's also an explanation that religion provides, right? Like it provides solace in terms of answers as yeah. to why things are um, um, the way they are, as to why are. your situation. And um, also, that in, if, in way and also if, if you're lacking in this life, maybe in the next. Maybe, maybe exactly. Of, <laughs> in the next yeah, as well. No. Um, so <laughs> I, I guess we can say that faith in the hard times is like a cup of tea. It's comforting. But you have to be careful <laughs> not to let it get too bitter. So let's come back to the story about this Kenyan man that calls him. His name is Eliud Simiu. I would have shared the the mm. news um, outlet, but it is a it's a blog. It's an open India, Op India. If you want to look for it, it's a Kenyan man that Eliud Simiu. So this guy calls himself the Jesus of Tongaren um, because he's done a lot of miracles and. One of why this became a news was that his wife was being interviewed and he said how the husband actually, you know, turned water into a cup, in, into tea. We know that Jesus in the Bible turned water to wine. He turned water to tea to feed the people in the community. You know, him, his wife, and people even took some of the tea back home. Now, um, you can just imagine what that is going to do for because it's in a village isn't it you can imagine what's going to do for the villagers they're hungry they're looking for soccer and there is this person that is doing miracles and also feeding them basically <laughs> just like jesus did and before we even go into that if you look at even in the in the bible times because that's the only 
um, um, faith that I've practiced. I don't know much about Islam or, or, or Buddhism. But even in the Bible, one of the ways to express Christianity is to give, right? You have to you have to give. Sell, sell in the Acts, all the disciples are selling what they have, giving to the community. The rich guy that came to Jesus, I follow all the laws since I was born. What can I do? Jesus said to him, go and sell everything you have and give to the poor. So if a poor person in that community is seeing someone actually feeding them, in a miraculous way obviously they're going to believe in that person but the question then is if you guys let's start from this one if you guys were if you put yourself in the situation of the community people right and someone is performing a miracle and calls himself jesus are you likely to believe that it's actually jesus <laughs> i'll start from wang on this one <laughs> put yourself in the shoes and then take yourself out of the shoes <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay so Problem, the problem with putting myself in the shoes, I can put myself in the situation, but mm. of, if I put myself in the situation with my intelligence, unfortunately, mm. it will not give the outcome of the villagers. That's the problem. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. So, if I'm in the mind frame of the villagers, I mean, what that will mean is that I have limited um, knowledge to the Bible in itself because mm. at least one central truth I know about the Bible is that you perform miracles doesn't turn you to Jesus. Elijah mm -hmm. did, Moses did, a lot of other people did miracles, but miracles doesn't automatically turn you to Jesus. A lot of people did even, I mean, if by record, if you look at the whole Bible, some did a, a lot more exciting things that Jesus actually did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nobody called themselves Jesus because of that. So um, if I'm a villager, I, I would want to hope that I, I read the Bible enough to be able to confirm such. However, mm -hmm. I mean, somebody doing the miraculous, for me, I mean, Obviously, he will get a huge following. People will go there for answers because, I mean, if hunger is in the land and somebody is turning water to tea, uh, maybe I can go there for breakfast every morning. So, yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> so I probably will, I'll just buy bread and stop at his house for the tea to wash it down. So, if he's going mm. to save, save me cost, I probably will rally around him, you know, just for that. However, I mean, if I take myself out, I mean, it's comical. Like I said before, um now i'm not on the i'm not the type of person that say oh no whether it was real or fake or you know we are not even going into that debate it could have mm -hmm. been uh, obviously a lot of people are levitating what's the name of this guy mark angel or so that guy yeah. that is a magician it could be a magician yeah. it could be anything and the bible says you know in the end right. times false process will arise they will do miracle like the other people do so um however the idea of performing miracle that was close to what jesus did doesn't talk. so you can't now say your name is jesus of this that's mm. where the line that's where you draw the line a lot of people still they did the miraculous i mean elijah went to the woman's house jesus told her to wine the woman with the, the widow of Zarephath that had enough mm. oil in her did, and after elijah did it he didn't st stand up and say he's the new savior um <laughs> the existence of miracle yeah. doesn't turn you to jesus of course so me being out of it is like okay two things could be possible first of all the first one is is this guy totally just fake you know and mm. that's why because if you are a, a, a Christian or a religious person that is miracle haunting, and that one I see it a lot in Nigeria. And I mean, when I was young, I saw all of my aunties and all of that. And that's why the way I practice Christianity now is by the true expression of my life. I'm not looking at one man to say, okay, if I follow this man, I will be able to see mm -hmm. you. I go to the Bible myself and use all the learnings to be able to live my own life, you know, to mm -hmm. be able to take the lessons and then be as good as I need. But when I was young, I had many aunties that, ah, this miracle center has opened. This one, is they are dead. They are now members of that church. This miracle center is a member of that church. This, you are miracle haunting. You are not haunting the person you are worshiping. You are haunting the one that looks like is following the person. And if you are mm. standing behind who you think is following the person, you will be led away because before you know it, the man has to say, um, for me to be able to make you heal now. That is this guy that's doing it now. The next time you say, I need to flog you for you to have the power. You see mm. people lying down in front of his house. That's the way people now become gullible because you first thought the first time this guy has to be real because of the miracle he's done. Then he yeah. gives you another instruction and another instruction. And that's why when you watch all these cult sects, when the leader mm -hmm. starts to get more bold and start asking for more things, you in your normal mind are like, I just has to be ridiculous. At least if I'm reading the Bible, they, nobody told me that you give me anointing through sex. Like I've read so many things. Some cult guys say, oh no, that is the one that will bring out the next Jesus. So he must sleep with everybody that is in the cult. So many ridiculous. And I'm like, if you just <laughs> even read the Bible yourself to an extent, you will know mm -hmm. that. So mm -hmm. I tell people that if you find yourself there, you were miracle hunting. And then you, you close your eyes to the fact that even 
you know, whether you believe or not, the, the, the people that wrote the Bible say this access is for everyone as you choose. Assess it by yourself. Yes, some people will be anointed to be able to explain in deeper mysteries than you can. But even the Bible says you should test the spirit. Go some, I think it was the Corinthian Christians, they went back and studied and came back and said, okay, let's know this thing better together. So, mm. I mean, me being out mm. of it, uh, obviously at first I can say, oh, did this guy put one tonic on that that tasted like tea? But if it's fake, it could be fake. But it's truly, you know, he's anointed of God. And because I personally, I still believe in miracles. I still believe the olden things can happen these days. But to what end is it? Once I now see the person trying to compare glory with Jesus, then I something in me tells me that this is just is cloud chasing. Because if right. truly I turn water to tea in a village and I'm a very um, devout Christian, I'll just share it and believe that God has allowed me to answer the trouble of that place. No fanfare, nothing whatsoever. I continue right. my life. So that that's that's basically how I how I look at it. Fair enough. And you've actually taken the conversation to the other side of the coin. And this one, I'm going to throw it to you, Shonti, and I'm happy to throw it to you. Um, right. So this uh, man, Jesus of Tongarin, right, is giving mm -hmm. hope to the villagers. And if you are if you're not as learned as as Wang is in the in the in the Bible, you are more likely to believe this person that is divine, that is, you know, God sent to save people from all their poverty and to give them a sense of relief. But is there a possibility that figures like this may tend to actually exploit the vulnerability of people? Because also one already <laughs> gave the example of people sleeping with everyone mm. saying they're trying to give the next mm. Jesus and things like that. So, um, yeah, I'll let you to take it away. Yeah, I mean, like my, my answer to that, yes, of course. Yes, and, and I was as I was listening to one in your talk, obviously I appreciate the distinction that you're trying to make between being learned or not. Like, but the problem fundamentally with like with like faith-based beliefs is that it's essentially unfalsifiable, right? And so like where where you choose to draw the line is interesting, right? Like you have one book that says you know, that donkeys could talk and that somebody split, like, the ocean into two so that everybody could pass. And that, like, you know, if you try and pray really hard enough, you can change somebody's... Like, there are all sorts of things that people believe, right? And because it comes out of maybe Papa Adeboye or Papa's uh, mouth, you think it's more likely than the person who turned into... So, like, where you choose to draw the line is interesting. And because the belief system itself is not rooted in any type of like um, verifiable or you know testable foundation, it's open to to this type of thing that we're talking about, right? So if somebody does turn water into wine and says that they are Jesus Christ, how can you prove them wrong? Um, okay, you say that 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 they are not because they are um, not interpreting the Bible right, right? And they mm. say, well, Jesus could do this. This is me doing it. Prove to me that I'm not like what what that I say I am, and then you say like you have to be able to right. This is why like science goes through the whole process of like putting out the hypothesis, testing it, peer review, all that kind of stuff to come at an empirical like you know conclusion. Mm -hmm. And once you open the door to a belief system, I think yes, of course, like you're gonna have people who are in Kenya saying they turned um you know water into tea, mm -hmm. and you have somebody who says you know donate. Um, if you want to be successful, donate 10% of your salary um, to my church every month. Then 30 years later, oh, wait, sorry, I didn't mean 10%. Actually, you don't have to do that, um, right? Or how, like, I'm listening to a, like, Papa in this instance talk about how, you know, um, the reason, the evidence for God's power in his mind is the fact that last week Sunday, they said they needed flat screen TVs. And this week, this week Sunday, they have 200 flat screen TVs. Um, in the warehouse, and you, Mr. Sheon, who is you know struggling on your hundred thousand a month salary, are supposed to look at that as evidence of you know um, grace or um, the the proof basically of concept. And if you just pray enough and give enough or do something, you too can reap the reward. So I mean, I, I understand the the benefits of of this belief system, right? If it helps you live a better life and all of that, but I, I don't I don't see how somebody can point to another person and say, you know, this belief system is ridiculous. When, you know, you, by your conceit, by the very nature of what you believe to, are in the same, you know, boat generally. Um, so, I mean, I don't, I don't begrudge, as long as no, he's not no, no. No, stealing, no, no. doing anything that is like, you know. Hmm. Yeah, go ahead, Juan. No, no, so so what, when, when you say that at the end of the day is, the Bible wasn't super open-ended, right? It didn't say those things cannot happen. 
But that's why I drew a line to say that when the person says he is now Jesus, Jesus was somebody's name. If if he no, wants to start Jesus his own religion to come based back? on what according to the Bible, Jesus is supposed to come back now at some yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and their science, science and their science is not like their yeah. science, but it's not which which which. No, which, no, no. Wang, which means you're also Jesus because your name is Joshua, no? <laughs> no, 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 no. The, the, essence, <laughs> the essence of Jesus is not a name that Spaniards bear, right? And at the end of the day, they were at least, if he, if he still, so my own problem with that essence, is that. the name itself. I just want to make a distinction. Yeah, the essence. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm now saying that if he tells us that he's not a Christian, he's, he starts his own religion, I, that's fine. He can start a religion that, okay, he's the first one called in his own religion. You cannot now say that, oh, you are doing it. Because in Islam, they don't really believe in miracles. I'm from the north. Islam don't believe in miracles. It's give arms to the poor, live life and go. There's, in the Quran, there was no miracle performed. I mean, not, not, so, not anymore. An no. person is not, not, not anymore. Anything no, one, that has like, been miracles. So, like in, in their in own, Islam, anytime they see miracles, Islam, they believe, like, oh, that's one. Christian based stuff. Well, Nothing has to do with Islam. That's fine. It's another religion. So if he turns water to tea and he wants to start his own religion, oh well and fine. But do not claim that it is part of Christianity. I, I was I was just gonna say that like that like first of all in Islam, Islam makes more of an accommodation for jazz and for like you know things of the spiritual than Christianity does. In the sense that like you can go to an alpha and ask for you know, charm to protect you against jazz and it will give you like, you know, like a script or something or Quran that you can keep. Whereas like, you know, pastor is prayer and a long story. Um, and I think yeah. like, you know, he's still, he's still kind of like dealing with the same problem basically that I brought up essentially, right? When um, you're saying if Jesus is supposed to come back according to um, the Christian belief, right? And yeah. you say there are signs, like fundamentally there are the denominations different within um, Christianity, right? Christianity, There's the Catholic yeah. church, yeah, and the Pope, and then there's the people who are Pentecostal, and the people who are Evangelical, and the Latter-day Saints, and the First Adventists, and the this one, and the that one, and they all have their different interpretations, basically, of what the same um, text means. So I, I don't see what precludes this guy in Kenya from, you know, um, starting his own um, movement. Um, I mean, yeah, fair enough. Um, one got some some connectivity issues. So but, technical uh, issues, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I tend to agree as well. Like it's all about discernment. I think the thing is, from if you look at it from the either side of the coin, the, the side of the coin that you're bringing in, um, Sheldon, and the side that Wang is bringing in, it's all about discernment. You still have to decide mm. what is for you and what's not for you. What you believe, what you not, what you're not to believe, where you draw the line, <laughs> basically. Mm. So it's if 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 there is no discernment faith is a recipe for manipulation because we've seen many people manipulate their congregation you know uh, we give the example of people you know bring bring money otherwise you're not going to make heaven and then many years yeah. later says oh actually i'm sorry it's not in the bible but you should be giving more <laughs> anyway you know you should increase it to 20 and 30 Boss and my head. Yeah, you know no. um, right. yeah yeah things like that <laughs> happens all the time so you need to have the discernment to to decide what you believe and um if you if you're a person of no, faith you need to be focused on on being a good person right which is what i think you're trying yeah, to say I and now this is all religions try to bring that as well and non-religion you know be a good person and then if you believe in heaven do what it takes to make heaven i guess that's that's fundamentally the premise right? because i think part of the things that initially radicalized me against like christianity right and i, I i've gone through like a more reactionary feeling to i guess like a more intellectual position that i hold now but like initially it was just the the irony right that the the most wicked people that i knew basically were people that were from church like it was like the meanest most backbiting most you know um toxic where the, so like the 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 area i guess i like started to um show from early on and like it, it's how i'm able to look at it and say yeah like it's all it's all of a piece if you open the door for one mm-hmm. person to say yeah so it was this guy i think i saw a documentary on um what was this guy emmanuel um emmanuel tb right who was doing like miracles the late from, pastor tb joshua the late Prophet pastor tb yeah yeah that was doing miracles from video and basically you know was marketing his his business to white people he, he understood critical race theory like you know deeply and understood that like white validation helps sell things in black markets and was able to first of all brand himself and market it 
for a foreign audience and then that now attracted the Nigerian audience and was able to turn it into a cult, basically, as as you know, as Wang was describing. But yeah, this this whole thing, the whole enterprise is ripe for this thing. And I think if we're all trying to live a good life, mm-hmm. I don't think you need the um esoteric, I guess like, you know, justification um, um behind this when, you know, ordinary like Darwinism, I guess, or evolution can explain why you wouldn't want to kill your brother or steal or, you know, take what doesn't belong to you or convert to any of these bad things that, um, you know, religion attempts to prevent us from doing. Fair enough. Wang, do you want to come back for, on that? No, no, no. So funny enough, I think I'd, I'd left for a while. I didn't even know where I left. I think Network kind of put me... I, I was <laughs> yeah, talking, but I didn't even know where I left. <laughs> so, so, no, so, those are, those are the mean, enemies spiritual powers that we interrupting yeah, <laughs> no, no 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 not at all so so for <laughs> me like i said um um fully for me i believe that i don't judge um or i don't relate christianity for the worst of those who apply it they are mm. the good of those who apply it actually and then that's where 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 because in when you want to envy an athlete you don't look at the worst footballers to tell you whether football is a great sport or not. You look at the best, right? So, um, and I think that's where a lot of people, you know, took religion. And, I, and I'll tell you, when Sean was saying something, there were a lot of people, at least especially in this Nigeria side of thing. Eh, I can tell you, Nigeria, I don't know whether we are made different, but we have a very black heart. For some people, if not that, <laughs> that there's a Jesus to believe in. No, if there's if there's no Jesus to believe in to say that <laughs> at least don't do bad, is is mm, could have been chaos be because yeah. no. it will be it will be chaos because so me personally in my heart I know I mean I want to live a good life right <laughs> naturally I just mm-hmm. feel like I'm supposed to be naturally good to the next person but geez yeah. some people some people and that's why when you even come to church and I tell people church is a hospital <laughs> like you come to see sick people yeah. there they are coming to come and get healed right so you will see mm-hmm. a lot of bad eggs there but the, thing is that a lot of us growing up depending on how our parents were quite um judicious with the things of church we believe that okay the way our parents have spoken about it to us we need to see perfect people in church and i I can this one i mean there's one story from when i was young of a pastor you know that was in our church that time every time i hear that story if not that i was just strong in finding an encounter for myself my god i would have i would have just said nah this is not possible you know it was very messy to me as a child just and this was the pastor of the church. Like what? Like how on earth can he keep living? Like even me, I was looking like how, how, how possible? Mm-hmm. I mean, it was just a long story. He had this, you know, there was a member that was really rich, and he told him he would help him do a farm and all of that. And really? you know, he the guy just he swiped. He didn't do the farm, swiped the money, and then not that he stayed, and relocated. Yeah. See, today well. it's not back in Nigeria. I know mm. he couldn't get that. And that guy, you know, was and that guy was doing that business and he put his trust in him because he's his pastor. And that's why I say, see, when you see some people do they are blind followership. You know, when you follow people, you know, follow the precepts. That's why I say when you follow the people, there's a line where you know that this person is is, is a different <laughs> and that's why when she was talking about light, there's a line of knowledge. And even the Bible mm. says mm. And, you know, the Bible speaks about knowledge that wisdom is crying out in the streets, people don't want it. If, when you say, you know, reverence your pastor, he didn't say your pastor can be good in spiritual knowledge, he's not good in financial knowledge. He may mm. be a great spiritual guy, he's poor in relationship, he's not a good husband to his wife. And then you sit down there and say, oh, because he's the pastor, I take all advice he gives me. My guy, you will sink. <laughs> because yeah. financial, they don't bestow financial knowledge. I mean, and there's one thing Papa said before that. You can't, no matter how much you pray, you can't become a pilot tomorrow, no matter the prayer. is. There are some, yeah. and you know, there are two legs a human stands on. I mean, naturally, the humanity and the spirituality. A lot of people, yes, delusion. There are some things that mm-hmm. no, it says it's a skill problem. It says even in the Bible, the ones that were fighters were skilled fighters. They trained in the act of it. Paul yeah. himself was a was a Sorry, lawyer. One, he, before before you enter the message mode, um, I have a time <laughs> constraint. I have okay, a time okay. constraint. I'm working with. No, so no, no. We, we can summarize. No, so we can just because, summarize that section to okay, say that it's let, let me just summarize. Finding, all right, go ahead, summarize. Let me just summarize in two minutes. Like, to be honest with you... This is too much. 30 it, seconds. Okay, 30 <laughs> seconds. Yes. They are precepts, they are, they are precepts of life. 
I'll just end with this. The Bible says Paul planted Apollos watered, but only God brought the increase. If you don't plant, you don't water, there's no increase. You are delusion. You are, you are delusional. If you think that you are not going to, there's no effort required of you before you reap by any chance. And so anybody that is thinking that I want to get there for no reason and waiting on hope, you'll wait forever. It's not because of any problem. You know, that's just where I'll end with. Okay, thank you. So it's basically kind of my summary as well. It's all about finding the right blend of faith and reason. Otherwise, you will end up with a cup of confusion. As always, I like to round up with some <laughs> would you rather questions. Um, let's start with some fun ones. Would you rather witness someone turning water into tea or water into wine? But you cannot drink either of them. But which one would you rather see? Turning water into tea or turning water into wine? Even though you cannot drink it. I'll start with one on this one no i prefer water into wine because tea water to tea could be dirty water so wine is clear that. <laughs> <laughs> so wine is clear that it was it was water and then it became whether i mean then the bible never even described whether it was red wine or what type of wine but at least yeah. if, in my mind it would be because then they used to use sour grapes for wine at least back in those days and i believe right. those grapes yeah. were kind of like yeah but yeah. you know i believe that they were like red type of wine so that's a clear distinction of you know, you some, know something transparent and then something red that i can't see but that tea could just be somebody fetching dirty water and people can drink it and say yes they taste um some tea bags inside and you could just so i rather the wine well, no, nobody can drink it it's just which one you rather see so oh, um, oh, oh wine yeah. wine yeah, wine yeah, i'd rather see one that's a yes, that's an interesting question you know, like the not being able to drink it but yeah i think mm. i'm with wine as well wine yeah yeah I'll, yeah, I'll rather see wine as well. That would be more fun. Seeing the water change. Um, would you rather this one? I know the one that Wang is going to choose, but would you rather live in a world where miracles happen daily but are never acknowledged, or one where miracles are rare but always proven? So miracles ad, ad, happen daily, never acknowledged, or it, miracles are rare but are always proven. Which world would you rather live in? So funny enough, I, I would rather the ones that are rare but proven because it's, it's useless if it's every... I mean, there are two thoughts to it on this one. Let me know. Um, because the first part I can say, oh, if it's every day and it's not proven, it's still the fact that if it's, you know, when it's true, it's better in the life of people. So that should be the natural one. But at the end of the day, on the second part for me, I believe that, I mean... Even if it's rare, let people know that rare and real mm. by any chance. Let it be evidence that it is real. It's it's happened. Because the more it happens every day and it's discredited, I mean, let me not go to find that question. I mean, now at the end of the day, become rare because nobody else, you know, believes it in that. But I, I would rather rare and real. Rare, proven, it's, you know, yes. it's like that. But again, at the end of the day, my Christian mind is telling me that, I mean, the Bible says, believe and see, not see to believe. So there's no need to prove it at the end of the day. So, but I mean, in 10 seconds, I would rather, in 10 seconds, I would rather the miracles were ubiquitous because I, I think that would, that would just come with, that would serve as evidence in of itself, right? If everybody kind of just knew and understood, as opposed to what you have now, where it's both rare and unproven. Um, I would rather a situation where everybody just kind of experienced miracles and, you know, we all didn't, we just all kind of like knew what it was and um, didn't need too much proof because we all intrinsically understood and, you know, could refer to the examples we had. Yeah. Um, five seconds, well, five seconds, five seconds, five seconds, Sheon. Would you rather your community hope come from religion or from government aids? Ooh, five seconds. Um, religion. Surprisingly, right? Um, <laughs> but yes, religion. And, All right. and then one, so take ask. it away. Yeah, no worries. Thank you. Surprisingly, <laughs> I will go with government aids. Why? Because the work of um, the work of government is community. And then, um, when is government that is doing it? Where you can hold people accountable, it can be replicated and replicated and replicated. Now, I don't want to go deep into the Bible, but. Miracles were meant to save people from situations per time, and it was mm. not by stretch of time. Mm. Israelites got to the water, they needed to pass, miracle happened. They were hungry in Egypt, manna fell. But if you check anybody that in the Bible that was blessed for a long period of time, they were not riding on miracle, they were riding on work they were doing. 
Abraham knew he was doing something. So for a community to thrive going forward for a longer period of time, you need system. Miracle is not, it happens, but it's not a system. It's a thing that will pop up when you need it. It's, it you know, wealth is not created by miracle. That's why when God gave them the manna, they couldn't store the manna till the next day. It was mm -hmm. food for that day. Miracle is to save you from where you are when there's a problem. It happens. You are sick. Your leg is caught. Leg grows out. You start walking again. But you will not become rich because your leg grows out again. You need something sustainable. So if we want to be able to sustain... Because me, I think of a world where everybody has... To, they worship God not because of what they need, but because of who they know He is and who they've experienced mm -hmm. in terms of an encounter. The the story I couldn't... Okay, I wanted... I wanted the story I couldn't say because when she was this... Because, I mean, I'll just do it in one minute. When mm -hmm. we were young... Nepa took lights, like they cut our lights in our house for two months. Mm -hmm. And this is scientifically proven water doesn't pump up for two months. Water was opening in our house. We just opened one tap and the water was pumping upwards for two months. Mm -hmm. This this one I didn't read it in a book. It's not that I read it in the Bible. I was living, I was bathing with the water. Mm -hmm. And then you know what happened? When when lights came back, that it system stopped. of us opening somewhere in the pumping machine for the water to go, it stopped. Mm -hmm. And he went back to pumping it from lights. Still to the, I see, anytime I tell somebody, the reason I'm still a Christian, obviously I, I love Jesus for, yeah. but when I remember that thing and I say, no, it's nobody told me the story. I was living there. I lived in it. There's, there's nothing you can tell me. It happens. It's just that obviously there'll be scientific proof that, oh, maybe at that time, what up? We will literally on it. We'll put our ear to the tap, the water, and it was a bungalow and the tank was ahead of our house. We we'll hear the water going up. No light. They, they caught the light. We didn't connect to anybody's light. There was no light. Any. Our gen was Tiger Generator. We didn't have any big gen. Hmm. There was nothing to pump the water. I was. I lived there. So, but me now, if I stay, now it's the Lord. It's say, oh, maybe you forgot some part of it. My parents were old enough. They were there. They can still narrate the story to today. But we did. That's why I say if those type of thing happens, it's an encounter that you can never, you know, an encounter that you know that for me, no matter what I see happening in the world, I say. So even if we get to, so I've even told myself that way, that even if if and when we get to the end, we find out that maybe Jesus was not true or anything, I would have been proud serving him when I was on earth because I saw things. And that, that so when I get to that, part, that's fine enough for me. <laughs> that's fair okay enough. for me. Okay, fair enough. So as, as we wrap up for this episode, let's all take a moment to reflect. Religion has been a source of comfort, a source of hope, and a source of community and salvation for a lot of people, but it can also be a tool for exploitation. So next time that you hear of a miracle or hear about someone doing miracles somewhere, ask yourself, is this faith leading me to freedom or am I being led astray? All right, that's where I'm going to leave it for today. Hope this episode has sparked some thoughts and maybe challenged you a bit. But remember, faith is a powerful thing and it's up to us to use it and navigate it wisely. So... Before I go, I would love to hear your thoughts. Do you think religion truly serves as the savior for the poor beyond all the other elements that religion brings to people, obviously? Or does it sometimes risk being a tool that is used for exploitation of people? You let me know in the comment section below. And as always, if you enjoyed the episode, please subscribe if you're not, if you're not done so, or if you're new, like the content. And on to the next time, keep asking questions, stay curious, and use your brain. Keep the faith, but with your eyes open. Thank you very much. Thank you, Wang, for your contribution today. I really appreciate it. Hopefully, we can see you sometime soon as well, not another six months. <laughs> now, when I have these head headphones, I can be anywhere now because I'm always looking for wired headphones, but I think this one is doing the job. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. T stay safe, people. See you next time. Thank you.